Hello everyone and welcome back to today's video continuing the series on the iGenius top leaders. In this video, we are discussing the leader Afnan Khalifa, the quote unquote Kim K of network marketing. She's your typical network marketing leader, showing off her luxury items, trips, and so much more, which is completely fine unless you're getting all these items from a pyramid scheme allegedly being run as a multi-level marketing company. Which is why we are talking about this leader and many other leaders in this series. She's a top leader that uses these things to influence an audience to join a predatory multi-level marketing company, in my opinion, called iGenius. So today we are going to be showing you why this is a problem, calling out the unethical actions, the lies, and everything that's attached to this so-called self-made leader. Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be continuing on the series of the iGenius top leaders. So the last video that I did discussing iGenius top leaders was also the first one. It was a part one and a part two. We talked about an individual by the name of Lily Zaremba and it was honestly a really interesting deep dive. You guys loved it. So today we are going to be diving into another top leader that a lot of you have sent me who is the self-proclaimed Kim K of network marketing. I'm going to be honest with you here. When I first heard that phrase, I immediately was in secondhand embarrassment, wanted to cave in, you know, self-destruct, mind you. You know what I mean? We're going to be diving into this individual. Two things I keep forgetting I wanted to mention. If you guys are really interested about iGenius, I am going to have a video linked in the description below for my best friend Chelsea. She's really dove into the company and honestly, she does a really great explanation of everything. So I highly recommend you go checking her out. But for this, in my series specifically, I wanted to zone into the top leaders that, again, are being most misleading and manipulative to a lot of people and why it's such bullshit, if anything. Also, here's the thing. I personally think she's a beautiful woman, and I noticed with the previous video that I made in regards to Lily, that a lot of people I noticed were going off about the work that she has had done. It looked like she had filler. And personally, I don't see there's a problem with it. And I'm going to be honest with you. I do not fuck with anyone who is going to bitch and complain about somebody's work that they've got done. That's weird. That's tacky. We don't do that. Okay. So if you do that, I'm going to delete your comment or I'm going to be an asshole back to you. We're talking about the business opportunity and the way that she's going about it. What she gets done with her work is none of our fucking business and has nothing to do with you and dissing on her looks is not cool, okay? We're going to get that out of the way. I don't care how you feel about stuff done to somebody's face. It's their face and their body for a reason, get the fuck over it. Sorry, I wanted to get that out of the way because this has nothing to do with it and I see way too many people pop off about it and have such a stupid perspective on getting plastic surgery, fillers, etc. And it's just, it's tacky. Let's go over her Instagram page. Her Instagram page is style by Khalifa. Afnan Khalifa, I believe is her name. I will say, if I am not pronouncing that um, correctly, let me know. Her page says number one coach and speaker, investor only page, the success coach you need, 35 plus million in sales, creating a thousand plus high income earners, DME money to know what to do. Then she, there's a YouTube link again, which is linked to a video that we're going to be reacting to today. The point is she's a self-proclaimed number one coach and speaker. I don't know in what world or scale, but again, they, most of them like to do that. Lily Zrimba, for example, was talking about like top trending network market or social media, which again is also bullshit, but nonetheless. So she claims that she has a lot of high income earners. She claims that she's also sold millions of dollars worth of products. Across her page, she literally shows this lavish lifestyle, wearing designer, being in Dubai, hanging out with all of her friends. You see this individual promoting herself off as a fucking millionaire for crying out loud. We're gonna be diving into that today. So the first thing I want to do is show you guys a video that was actually posted up on a YouTube page called Truly. Now again, Truly apparently made this video that says, I used to be a waitress, now I make $90,000 a month, bling life. So it says just two years, Afnan Khalifa could not have even imagined the life she lives now. From traveling around the world to buying luxury designer items, Afnan lives a glamorous lifestyle. The 23 year old moved to Canada from university in 2016 and was working as a waitress when she decided to get into investing and marketing. She has now become dubbed the Kim K of network marketing, which I'm gonna be honest with you here, what the fuck does that mean? Like legitimately, if you were the Kim K of fashion, that makes sense. The Kim K of beauty. I don't know. That would make sense. But the Kim K of network marketing, but I'm not, I'm not really surprised because a lot of people, sorry, in this industry like to put the most ridiculous titles on themselves that make no sense like their careers do. Anyways, the Kim K of network marketing. Today, Afnan is going shopping for a followers giveaway prize and to surprise her friends with birthday gifts. Afnan said, everything I have ever dreamed of, I have it today and we're still going to dream bigger to achieve those other ones. Right here, I do want to kind of put up here, truly is posting up and discussing a network marketer. 
a multi-level marketing individual. And honestly, I would highly recommend a lot of you guys to go to the comment section and just share your information about this because, and just pop off in the comment section, mind you, because this is honestly highly irresponsible for truly to be posting about individuals that are a part of a predatory scheme. Network marketing, that is not okay. It's very unrealistic, mind you. Well, maybe they didn't do enough research. I still feel like they should have done enough research on what this woman does before just promoting it because this drew some traffic to this woman's page. Nonetheless, though, we're gonna be watching it and I'm ready to dive into what the hell this has to do with anything. I used to work as a waitress and now I earn $90,000 a month. I am the Kim K of network marketing. Two years ago, I would literally go to Zara and look at the price and hoping I can afford it. And I always thought it's too expensive to buy something that's $1,000, $3,000, $5,000. And now, that's all we do. My life absolutely has not always been like this. So before doing what I do today, I used to be a waitress. Within the past two years, my life absolutely transformed. My name is Afnan Khalifa, I'm 23 years old, and I am an investor and marketer. This is what pisses me off. I'm an investor and marketer. While she may actually have some investments to doing well, what she really, she's labeling it as just a marketer. She's not actually really being clear exactly of what she does, and that's the problem, is people want to know what she does, but she lightly labels it and kind of goes around the actual scheme of it all. But again, we're only being shown the lifestyle, the luxury, the money, etc. And I used to be a waitress and now I make a shit ton, okay? Great, we kind of all have been there before, except for we're not making shit tons of money off of other people, you know, good job. I actually grew up in Saudi Arabia and I don't come from a wealthy background. I moved to Canada in 2016 and it was for university. While I was studying, I had two jobs, always running around. So guys, we just finished doing the hair and the makeup, I'm obsessed. So fun fact, I was named Kim K of Network Marketing. Network Marketing is probably one of the most genius business models out there. It's you basically becoming an entrepreneur with a small, small startup fee. And how you make money is by helping someone else make money. And I think that's genius. Oh my God. So right off the bat, okay, Truly fucking knows then. Truly needs to pull their head out of their ass, first of all. Let's get that out of the way. Because posting up an individual that is literally clearly stating network marketing is genius in the best opportunity. The way that you make money is by helping other people make money. Not really, but that's complete bullshit. But we know the real money maker is people. Funny enough, she's not mentioning that she sold a fuck ton of products and is making a lot of money from that. She immediately referred to the people. That already is predatory and gross in itself. This is another thing, like this woman is young and she's doing all this and got lucky enough to get at the top of a company, a predatory company at that. And this is all fun and games to her. Like this is just so gross to me and cringy. I, ew, God. It's genius. When I got started here, I wanted to make, you know, $3,000. I'm like, if I can make, if I can replace my waitressing job and make $3,000 a month, perfect. I can do it from home. I can do it from anywhere. Fast forward till today. Now I earn $90,000 a month. Social media is everything in my work. The reels, the TikToks, the Instagram. We're just getting started. I'm gonna go upstairs right now, show the walk-in closet. This is a mini walk-in closet. For my quick stay, we love designer, but we love investing more. We're gonna pick an outfit for Rodeo Drive. Um, I don't know what to pick today. Okay, again, this is quite confusing to me on why this is only showing designer, money, lifestyle, and that's it. Not genuinely how she did it. Also, something I always am just gonna be very out and open about, the people that are the most flashy with their money like this and won't shut the hell up about the designer and everything are the people that are their new money but tacky. And you don't, you shouldn't have to flaunt it 24 seven to prove that you have money. You shouldn't even feel the need to prove it. If you have money, you have money, fuck it. But it's just so comical to me. Like, what is this supposed to show? I understand that this is a very interesting topic for some people. So they're gonna go to her page and be very fascinated by this, but this is a very easy way that people get recruited into something because they witness that one person making a lot of money when it's feasibly not possible for most people, if at all. It's just, oh my God, it's so gross. And again, also you guys, I do wanna let you all know. So let's actually continue and watch. Okay, time to get dressed. Shh. 
Ladies, I am gonna go oh. shopping. Yeah. Yeah. You, look so good. Shopping? you guys want anything? Yeah, I have a list. Um, <laughs> bye guys. So we are gonna go shopping right now on Rodeo Drive. I have two of my girls upstairs. It's their birthday. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, spoil them, buy some luxury items for them. And on my Instagram, I had a couple weeks ago a giveaway, and now today I'm gonna be announcing the winners and giving them some luxury items. Thing I do want to actually talk about that I don't think a lot of people know is in regards to massive giveaways like this these are tax write-offs for people so if she is making let's say $90,000 a month that is ridiculous okay that's a fuck ton of money so naturally she's gonna need to have some sort of tax write-offs to balance it off so that way she doesn't have to pay excessive amounts in taxes hence designer items when you give away if you are a content creator and if you hit a certain point you can give away items like that and have it as a tax write-off so there's that so she is capable allegedly from what I, from what I know, people can do that. Now, this could maybe not be a tax write-off for her. Fall under the category of a tax write-off for her and be a benefit, essentially. I'm gonna be honest with you here, like, I'm gonna want nice things or maybe here and there luxury shit. Like, that's cool. Designer, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. It's the over-flaunting that I have an issue of. And the purpose of this, like, if we think about what is the purpose of this video, it is to expose people to what she does and make people want it to. I remember being so broke to the point where I look at a jeans at Zara, which is like, you know, $50, and thinking if I had $50 in my bank account to actually buy that jeans, and now just walking into luxury stores, just buying things without looking at the price. It's an amazing feeling. We bought some nice gifts for our sisters. So excited to give it to them. They deserve it. We spoiled them with Burberry today. One of my goals when I got started was to retire both of my immigrant hardworking parents and when I finally did that it was the best thing ever. I was actually visiting them a month ago and you know it was a Monday morning at like 11 a.m. and they were just sitting in the backyard doing absolutely nothing, sipping coffee and that to me was just everything. One thing I do want to pause and discuss is the concept of retiring your parents. I've actually heard a couple people, even uh, Dre, for example, discuss this, talking about how they want to retire their immigrant parents. And now, first of all, I think the goal of trying to retire your parents is fucking cool. And I love seeing women that are successful and motivated and want to go after things. But the problem is, is where is all this money coming from? Where is all this money for designer, being able to freely purchase things, give away luxury items? Where's this money coming from? That is coming from people. So how many people do you think that she had to plow through or make shit up to in order to make this much fucking money? because you need a massive team to be pulling in these numbers if this is true. That is what's so mind-boggling to me is how many people got fucked over just for her to enjoy this type of lifestyle. And another thing that I do want to mention and I've heard allegedly people even like for example Lily Zaremba aren't as rich as they claim to be. And again I'm gonna be honest it's honestly not horrifically hard to fake a luxury lifestyle on social media. So part of me wonders how realistic is all this? Is she actually pulling in 90k a month or is it bullshit? I just I'm very interested in that. Another one down. This is for one of my girls. I know she's been obsessed with Dior. So this is for her. I know she loves it. So I can't wait to give it to her. Guys, I am back. Oh, hello. I got, oh my god. You guys wanna see what I got? Yes. This is for the giveaway. Wow. Yeah, so this, this is for the giveaway for the girls. If you adore her, Dior her. Exactly. If you adore her, Dior her. <laughs> When I first saw her online, living this lifestyle, buying herself designers, I was like, whoa, I don't see a lot of Middle Eastern girls being that independent at age 22. How is she so successful? How is she making this money? And I had to find out. Okay, that's what's so sad to me right now is clearly she's able to target a very specific audience and it bothers me because she's targeting individuals that aren't very fortunate money what and again we know that most people do but it bothers me because i feel like she has such a pull on individuals who come from immigrant families or are immigrants you know what i'm saying so people who maybe have struggled and maybe have come to this country for example i that does not sit right with me at all and it bothers me and that's something i personally i don't know much about and i really wish i could learn more and educate myself on this um but the targeting of uh, people that are immigrants in multi-level marketing companies it just really bothers me so much and it pisses me off and I just do not like how people have are so easy to go after the most vulnerable people and are e people that are trying to figure society out life figure out a new country that's really fucked up so 
it makes me sad. And again, maybe this girl is doing well, but still, again, all the other people that they have targeted that are not doing well is the issue. Shortly after she became my mentor and I just get inspired by her every single day. Like person who has the best caption for this specific picture, person who, person who has the best caption for like this video, they I win a prize. Yeah. Like make it's them work for it. Yes. <laughs> and once I saw that she was obtaining this level of success, I'm like, I can do the same thing. We went hand in hand, we decided to create this empire of a team together and now we're here in LA. Do you think this will go up in the next 60 days? It will, it's gonna follow the same trend as the other one. Yeah, so, that. so this is the time where you are just dip out of the market. Allow, allow. Yeah, yeah. Dip out of the market. I love that. Okay guys, good. guys, I'm gonna just go for a second. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be, I'll be right back. Don't worry about it. So guys, I know it's a late birthday gift. Hey, happy birthday, you guys. My lifestyle right now, I would describe it in two words, financial freedom. My work ethic, in one line, basically, you would never outwork me because I am working all day long, every single day, because I'm obsessed with what I do. <laughs> Wait a minute, okay. So we just got over discussing time freedom. But then she immediately switches and says, you'll never work harder than me because I'm working all the time every day. No one at Truly caught this shit? Oh my God, this is so bad. And you know what bothers me is I want to be excited for successful women, I do. But I cannot be excited and supportive of women who take advantage of other people and lie on the fucking internet in order to make their money. That is not what I am cool with. I cannot accept that at all. And it pisses me off because again, that's cool. That's really sick if you're able to afford something you've always dreamed of. There's many things that I'm busting my ass on to try and afford as well that I wanna be able to do. I'm not gonna be taking advantage of people in order to make that type of money. Okay, so that was it for this part of the video. So we're gonna stop it here. I do want to kind of go over a couple things real quickly so there were some things that she posted while she was in Dubai that I want to read off real quickly that are some just regular Instagram story posts so this says network marketing or MLM gets a bad rep but we forget that there is bad apples in every industry let's debunk that real quickly every industry absolutely does have bad apples however for example what is the issue with multi-level marketing versus every other industry for example every other industry actually pays people properly from what we can see and again there are some companies that are shit but majority legally people have to actually get paid for their time which is very important there's also benefits insurance etc that comes with every job which is very good in regards to a multi-level marketing company there is no promise pay for effort so you can bust your ass and make absolutely nothing and that's the trend that we see most of the time on top of that though in regards to this in any other industry your work and your work ethic actually are valued you actually can do like you can do well everything is dependent on you this is not dependent on you it's dependent on how many people you can recruit that's the issue and the problem is is you literally the iGenius company is set up to where you have to literally sell this lifestyle essentially and go on and promote it in a way to where you can make money off of people essentially paying monthly to use the services and again it's bullshit when they go on all about well this is this is financial literacy you can find all this shit online I'm not kidding. Everything that they so-called pretend that they have access to, you can find it anywhere. It's all about just Googling, searching. Trust me when I say you can find every bit of information that they pretend that they're giving to you at such a great deal for free. Then she says, when I got started, I genuinely wanted to learn to trade and invest in crypto, forex, and stocks. I was scared to get into it, but I knew that I needed to invest. It's not optional at this point. I need to learn a skill set that will pay me forever. I did not want to work a job forever. Now again, there was nothing wrong with wanting to work for yourself. That is super sick. That's super cool. What we're not going to do though is lie to other people so that way you can mooch off of them. That is where we cross the line, bitch, okay? I don't care. Designer's not gonna cover this one, honey. This is gross. She says, and I got started, no one told me to share it or recruit, but there's no other way you actually can truly make money. Now, mind you, again, if she was able to invest very well, that could be a part of her income, is actual legit investments. But in regards to iGenius, which she is so heavily attached to, the real way to make money off of a team is off of a team. I love what I was learning. I was actually mind blown that I lived 21 years of my life without learning how to invest. Honey, you were 21. Like, I'm not supposed to fucking know everything either. You're young, you're a kid still. Like, okay, like, I know I'm not a kid, but at the same time, like, the pressure to understand and know everything at a young age is fucking weird. And I feel like she sadly has participated in that because she's saying how, like, she was so shocked she didn't know all these things by 21 or before 21. And I'm just like, you were figuring life out. That's okay. You don't need to know everything so quickly. That's the beauty of life. Don't rush it all the time. I'm upset that only men talked about it and did it, which 
which again, that is something we can see. A lot of men do have a major focus on this and sometimes do have more opportunities to have access to this information. That's why there's so much more open conversations about financial literacy with women and I fucking love that. Um, so I started sharing it to my girlfriends and then by mistake to ladies I met at events and waitresses and I was seeing how much my life was transforming and how their life was as well. So I made it a mission. I made it a mission to raise awareness to all ladies out there and build an empire of ladies that run shit and know how to invest because investing is necessary. In the regular world, that is fucking sick. But we know damn well this is not about investing. This is about recruiting people. And that is what's so nasty. All right, guys. So we're going to be listening to a bit that is of her on a podcast talking about money hacks, crypto, and investing, how to create financial abundance. So this is on a podcast. And anyways, let's get into it. But first off, I also do want to mention if this name gets thrown out there, I think it's important to say that her brother his name is Rakan. Rakan? Rakan, I believe. Um, he is a part of my genius as well. It is another top leader. So that's how she got into this business as a whole. Anyways. Welcome to my viewers and listeners. This is Madam Afnan. And can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your, your background, your business, how it all started? Okay. My background was very humble, right? I actually lived my whole life in the Middle East. Coming here to Canada in 2016, a lot of my life was hard because different culture, different language. Um, different just even lifestyle and I came to Canada and I thought oh like I can get a job and I can you know be financially free with a job but I did not know that most jobs are underpaid overworked right people are literally living like paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. um, and I remember being 18 in university first year and I was handing out resumes to like literally 50 retail jobs wow. like every retail store out there every restaurant just hoping to have like someone that would hire me. I've never had experience before in Saudi, so no one would hire me, right? right? Um, and I'm 18. So when we came here, both my mom and dad were immigrants. They both don't speak English. So it was on me and my brother to kind of like work hard and make it, you know, at a young age, we have so much responsibility. So I remember having, being 18, having two jobs, not having um, my, my driving license or a car. So I would commute all the way from Richmond Hill to Toronto, an hour and a half every single day. What? and do two jobs and full-time school it was i don't know how i did it like me looking at it i don't know how i did it but you know what it shaped me to the person that i am today so resilient and yes. just like there's always a solution right whatever you're going through there's always a solution absolutely and so you started at 18 what was the first thing that got you going was it a business what was it that pushed you through to where you are today I was, I just needed money. Yes. I needed money to support my mom and my dad, right? My first job was Starbucks. Oh. I was a barista, literally like shaking the, the espressos and stuff. Um, and I was happy. I was happy and I, I knew that was a step. Mm -hmm. And then my friend was telling me about serving because they're like, oh, like you can work the same hours but have like tips and make more money. And I was like, okay, that sounds like interesting. Because back in Saudi, there is nothing called tips. Oh. Like you just pay the bill and that's it. That's there's it. no tips. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay, let's try this thing. And then... I got to serving, but the only thing that was, it was good money where I actually got comfortable. Mm -hmm. So for like two, three years, I just stayed there at the restaurant. You know, I was hopping from one restaurant to another, but I was like at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm comfortable because I tried a nine to five job and that was more work, less money. Wow. I was like, serving sounds like a better idea, but yes, I don't yes. want to do it for the longest time. But like, I was just stuck in that phase. So literally a year and a half ago, I knew nothing about network marketing. I knew nothing about trading, investing. Um, and I saw my own brother actually doing this thing, being in all those financial markets. And I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. And I was so skeptical for like two years. I was like, you know, like us girls were like, mm, numbers are not ours. Financial markets, not ours. Right. But then I was like, I'm stuck and I'm working at the job that I hate. I need something. Yeah. So what I'm very confused. Her story keeps changing because she says that she was got comfortable and she really liked the service industry. Then she switches and says she doesn't like it. She said she was comfortable, but then she like fucking hates it. So I'm kind of confused on what she's getting at here. The point is though, is she apparently came from, you know, not a lot of money. And again, that is gotta be excessively hard. The working two jobs through college is not easy. And without a fucking driver's license, oh my God, that is that is not fun whatsoever. But now we're gonna be getting into how she really got it into iGenius. It's, I'm gonna try this. It's gonna be the best thing that ever happened in my life. Or I'm gonna try this and it's gonna be the worst thing that ever happened in my life. Exactly. Or I'll, I'll, it's not really the worst thing. It will be just you losing like whatever investment that you put in. So I was like, let me try it. And just me trying that new venture, a year and a half later, I'm here. Wow. And you are, I mean, you're such a success within it. And I see all of your posts and you're just killing it, girl. I mean, you inspire so many women to, to achieve, you know, to get to that six figure. 
um, point. And so behind your success, what would you say are some of the keys? Um, when I got started, I was always, and I talked about it in Daniel's Jesus event, I was always working out of fear, right? Mm -hmm. Out of fear of being at that point where I can't provide for my family. And some people would look at it like, oh, like, you know, you got to work out of faith. Well, I had no faith in anything. I just needed money at that point. Yes. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us go through that point. We're like, I just need money right now. And that, that's what, literally what pushed me to work 10 times harder every single day. People, people wake up, they're like, oh, I'm not motivated today. I'm like, I had no business thinking about if I'm motivated today or not. I just need money. So I need to work and actually make it happen. Yes. So honestly, I worked out of fear yeah. and just... You would say that's a big key. That, that's... That's, that's the key. The key. <laughs> when you got the fear and you just push through it and you have to get some, no matter what. It's kind of alarming to me that that's her way of doing well is working out of fear. Like that shouldn't be the way to motivate people whatsoever. I don't fucking work out of fear. I think a lot of people don't work out of fear. That's weird. I don't understand this concept whatsoever. And it's just really bothering me. So it took her about a year and a half apparently for her to make all this money, right? So I'm assuming she was quite new and especially if her brother was higher up in the company. This is my alleged opinion here. I could be completely wrong. What I have seen, whether it's mother-daughter duos, best friend duos, sibling duos, I have witnessed people try and stack recruits underneath people that they care for. So that way it benefits them, but at the same time it benefits the other person as well. So they both grow and financially just go crazy. And so with IGs being fairly new, I understand why she did so well, honestly. And again, that could literally be wrong, but I'm just saying that's what I've seen a lot of times happen. And I would be surprised if that's how it worked. Motivation you have or you don't, you're saying that, you know, like motivation you said, don't last. Yeah. Motivation literally does not last because one day you're motivated. You're like, Oh, this is the best day in my business. Yeah. The next day it's the worst day in your business. So how do you maintain it? by just having your goal. So I know what I'm gonna achieve. Okay, I, I know the end goal, right? I talk about it all the time. Imagine if you put on, on Google Maps, right? Imagine if you put on the Google Maps, you're like, I wanna go to Starbucks. Yep. Okay, you put the location, you start. Let's say, Dina, you take a, a wrong turn, a wrong right. Mm. It's gonna reroute you and it's gonna still take you to Starbucks. That's right. No matter how many right or wrong turns you're gonna take, it's gonna still reroute you to go to the same Starbucks. So there's no, just have your goal and just keep keep going, keep pushing. You're gonna get to Starbucks at some point, no matter how many right, left U turns. That is the shitty advice from her. Oh my god! So essentially, acting as if multi level marketing is a way of oh well, you know, if I just keep going, I'll hit it. I'll hit it. That is highly unrealistic for most people. That does not happen. But because it happened to her, she genuinely thinks maybe that you can get anywhere you want to in that multi level marketing if you just keep doing it. But that's the thing though is. is at what cost do you keep pushing? Because again, it comes with a cost. This kind of stuff comes with a cost of time, money, all of that. So, and again, iGenius has it to where you have to spend a fuck ton of money every single month to have access to it. So my thing is, is not only do you have sales requirements, you have to spend money every single month. So all of that, but you have to still push. When is that too much? I love that because like you say, you have the aim, you have the objective, you go for it and, and that's it. And, and what would you say some things are that hold you, that would hold you back or would hold someone back? How would you, and to get through that? Well, there's a lot of things that hold a lot of us back, right? Tips from growing, like hold us back from growing, yeah. We're all so scared being, to, of being judged. We're so scared of being the odd person. We all want to fit in. But listen to this. We're all so scared to stand out. Meanwhile, we always look up to people that stand out. Wow. Because think about it. If whoever I look up to, whoever you look up to, whatever figure, whatever entrepreneur you follow, yep. it's probably because they're different. It's probably because they're not like the average person. Yep. And when, it's, when it comes to us, you're like, Oh, but like, I don't want to post this because, you know, maybe, you know, this person, gonna, they're going to think this about me or they're going to do this about me. Yeah. But it's like, people are going to judge you. And like the greatest motivation of life is I'm going to die. And I completely understand what she's talking about, where we all follow people who stand out and that's why we get very inspired by that, which we totally do. However, something that's really driving me crazy is trying to make this concept of standing out in a good way and bad way combine. Now, standing out in a bad way and a negative way is with multi-level marketing companies where people get sick and tired of the hey girl bullshit, of uh, people getting like cold message on Instagram, people seeing the false income claims, all of that stuff. That is a negative connotation attached to it for 
reason. It's not unique for a good thing, it's unique for a bad thing. Whereas uniqueness in regards to being a different creator, talking about something that's different, personality-wise, that's good. But trying to mesh it and be like, oh, well, you're scared of standing out. I think people are, again, scared of being the hey girl, scared of being the boss babe and the scammer, which is something that happens all the time with these people. You're gonna die, right? Like, I'm sorry, if that does not motivate you, I'm gonna die and you're gonna die. If that does not motivate you, I don't know what does. Why are we like going back and forth in our head, that, that battle in your head going, when you wake up, before you sleep, like, I'm gonna die. Absolutely. So I need to just work the hardest and make the best life for myself because it's like, there's no other option. That is such a great analogy. You just said, you know, we're all going to the same place and it's like, that gets you up and gets you pumped and gets you going. And um, no time to waste. So what would you recommend what are some things that you could say if there's a couple things that to, to grow as a person? What helped you to grow and, and push you beyond, you know, your, your comfort level? Um, the principle of exposure. So I, I learned this literally um, two months ago when I was in Orlando. Mm -hmm. and, and they talked about how when you are in places where you are getting exposed to some things, your mind is so stretched, it can never go back. Mm -hmm. It's like a disease, right? Imagine, you know, being in a Rolls Royce for the first time. Okay. Right. You you smell the leather. You see like let's, let's say the orange interior. You see the RR in the back. You see how smooth it drives. You see when there's a cop, it, it starts like ringing and stuff. Yeah. You see those certain things, and you're like, wow, this is definitely not like my my Honda car. It's not the same. Yeah. And you start getting exposed. You're like, well, you know, I I experienced that, and I want to keep that. Wow. How, why can I just you know? So I I'm always trying to expose myself to like things that like. I became friends with like people that make a million dollars a month. You know how uncomfortable that is? Honestly, really confused by this analogy of getting exposed to other things that you don't want to go back because it's almost like putting such a price tag on being exposed to things that are worth a lot more so that when you train your mind to start trying to fight for it more. I think that becomes unhealthy because when is enough enough? And that's exactly what I feel like is connected to multi-level marketing is these top leaders, it's never enough. It is never enough. So they will always want to continue to recruit people. And honestly, in the entire system as a whole, it's never enough. You always have to recruit more people unless you're at the excess of the top. And even sometimes top leaders as a whole aren't even making as much as they claim. It's never enough. But the advice of in order to do well is trying to put yourself in front of other riches so that way you never want to let go of that makes no fucking sense to me. Like, I, I just, maybe it's me, but I genuinely, like, I, I get luxury and experiencing th fun things. But to the extreme that some of these people go to, I don't fucking get it. Like, it's so excessive. And I feel like the weight that they put on materialistic things to show success is fucking weird. Every single time, put yourself in places where you can get exposed. And obviously, like, we all know, like, personal development, you read the books. Yes. As, even if you hate the books, read the books, podcasts, listen yes, to yes. detox. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Learn. Um, With your millionaire friends, a million dollars per month, per friend, month okay. friends. what would you say some of the key things are from them that they do that you really see throughout the time that you've spent with them? It's crazy, but like they never say anything unless it's like thought, like everything they, they like they don't just say something. The, every sentence they say has like a million meanings behind it. And it's scary. It's like, oh my God, I need to really like think about it. Yeah. Um, but they, they just they just look at the overall picture. They have like the bigger picture. They mm -hmm. look at the overall picture. Um, you can always learn from just like having their habits. You know, having them close to you when you need advice. Mm. One thing that I actually learned yes. was spend money on like yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like I was ordering Uber with my friend the other day, my millionaire friend, and I was like getting the regular Uber, and he's like, no, get the get the black Lux or whatever. Right. I was like, well, it's the same car. It's just a car. But he's like, no, you gotta put your plate yourself in situations where you don't know who you're gonna meet, you don't know who this. And I was like, again, principle of exposure. Like you're ex you're being in that luxury car, although it's an Uber. Yeah. But it's like you're you're getting exposed there. So he's like, never. I'm sorry, but I call fucking bullshit on this. In what world is the way that the millionaires are doing great is because they speak philo fucking philosophically all the time? That makes no sense or constantly exposing yourself to materialistic things is gonna change you for, I literally don't understand that. That makes no sense to me. Hard work and ethical work, mind you, can totally get you far, but you don't need the random books. You don't need to sit in a fucking nice car to want one or get there. That's so weird to me. You also don't need to speak a certain way or have multiple meanings to what you say. Like, this makes no sense. You see what I'm saying? I feel like
like this girl is pulling shit out of her ass. And I'm not going to lie, with the way that she's talking in this podcast, I have a feeling that some of the things that she shares in regards to riches and luxury are not what they seem. I feel like there's some bullshit fuckery in here. But again, this is the exposure of what some of these people are, how they act and how they behave and how they represent themselves. And this is the representation of the company I genius. Some of these top leaders I do think need to be discussed more about because they're trying to use their money as a way of control, knowledge, and power. And it's really uncomfortable because the things that she's sharing, if you really pay attention to it, are fucking word vomit. It's mumbled and jumbled up. There's no, no true value to it. So that's it. We're going to actually stop in today's video. I love you all so much. I will see you in the next video. Stay going, my beautiful queens. Love you. Bye.